Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Youssef. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Order 20 of 2020, adjourning the second session of the fifth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a phone call with the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi and discussed bilateral relations and outstanding joint cooperation in addition to regional topics of common interest. They also discussed their country's efforts to combat the coronavirus and agreed to coordinate and exchange best practices between competent agencies in charge of combating the pandemic and promoting health preventive measures. The Speaker of the Representatives Council for the Yazayna chaired the weekly meeting remotely and expressed thanks and appreciation to the medical team of Bahrain for their efforts in facing the pandemic. The Council then approved a draft law on GCC citizens owning already built real estate and lands in the Kingdom of Bahrain. A press conference was held earlier today to discuss the latest developments related to COVID-19. CEO of Information and E-Government Authority, Mohamed al qad expressed thanks and appreciation to Team Bahrain in facing the pandemic led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. He praised the role of authorities and institutions in shifting to electronic services and said that the number of electronic transactions doubled during this period, which is a considered a progress for the government of the Kingdom of Bahrain. He affirmed that creating the Be Aware app, AI systems have been used to develop it, and the app includes statistics, active cases, booking appointments for testing, and instructions to follow. He praised the efforts of the citizens and residents in following instructions and procedures to reduce the spread of the virus. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Walid al Mana, praised the royal speech of His Majesty the King and added that it is a source of pride and a drive to continue the efforts to combating the virus. He said that the Ministry of Health has raised the capacity number of beds following the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. He added that the success achieved by the Kingdom in overcoming this challenge is thanks to the awareness of the people of Bahrain. He stressed that some active cases did not follow instructions and social distancing which resulted in some cases infecting their families and friends. He urged everyone to follow instructions and assume their national responsibilities in order to overcome the pandemic. The infectious diseases consultant and microbiologist at the BDF Hospital and member of the National Task Force for Combating COVID-19, Colonel Dr. Manaf Al-Ghahtani, appraised the national unity of the people of Bahrain and added that this unity is what helps Bahrain in overcoming this global challenge. He affirmed that the rates of active cases are the result of some not following the rules and instructions. He stressed the importance of wearing face masks even if individuals were together in a car. He added that in case of people being in a bus, the number should be limited with distance between each person, windows are open and wearing the face mask. The consultant of infectious and internal diseases at Samani Medical Complex, Dr. Jamila Salman, affirmed the continuation of efforts to face the coronavirus. She said that all current active cases are stable and five are in critical conditions. She stressed the need to commit to social distancing and to limit family gatherings as much as possible. She also called on everyone to follow the instructions and assume their social responsibility to limit the spread of the virus. She added that these efforts could definitely help decrease the spread and overcome the virus. Amman recorded 298 new coronavirus cases in the last 24 hours, 209 of which were detected in non-Omanis, bringing the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 4,019. The Ministry of Health announced that 89 cases were recorded in Omani citizens. So far, 17 people have died of the virus and 1,289 others have recovered in the country. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said that Iran is trying to foment, foment terror in the Middle East. He stated that even during the pandemic, the Iranians are using the Ayatollah regime's resources to foment terror across the world, even when the people of Iran are struggling. Tensions between Iran and neighboring countries remain high in the Arabian Gulf following naval sh showdowns last month.
Yemeni army forces were called and attacked by the Houthi Qum militia on locations north of Al-Bayda governorate. The media center of the Yemeni army said that the army forces were monitoring all the movements and mobilization of the militia during the past days, which caused the Houthi militia to suffer great losses in lives and equipment during the battles. The army was also able to recover large amounts of weapons and ammunition. And now we move to Bara for the latest in business news. Thank you, Mohammed. Good evening and welcome to the business news on Bahrain International. I'm Bara Abdallah and starting with the local stocks as Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,232.40 points, marking a decrease of 6.18 points below the previous closing. This decrease was due to the fall in the commercial bank sector, investment sector and industrial sector. Results indicated that 55 equity transactions took place with a volume of 989,174 worth 223,000 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the commercial bank sector representing 46.76% of the total value of securities traded. Emirates Airlines has announced its plans to operate scheduled flight services from May 21st to nine destinations, which are London, Frankfurt, Paris, Milan, Madrid, Chicago, Toronto, Sydney, and Melbourne. The airline was also offering connections to Dubai for customers traveling between the UK and Australia, the company said in a statement saying that the flights will be available for booking. S.M. Martin posted a first quarter pre-tax loss uh, with million pounds after sales dropped by nearly a third due to the impact of the coronavirus outbreak and the destocking of dealers. COVID-19 and the resulting global economic shutdown have had a material impact on the performance this quarter as the detail sales slumped 31 percent year on year, the company said earlier. Shipping group Maersk posted first quarter revenue in line with expectations today as they dropped as much as 25% in global containers volumes in the second quarter. Earnings before interest tax depreciation stood at 1.52 billion US dollars slightly above company guidance provided in March with its suspended full year guidance due to the uncertainty caused by the coronavirus pandemic. And that's all for the business news for this evening. And it's back to you, Mohammed. Thank you, Bara. UK is testing the use of drones to deliver medical supplies more quickly to hospitals and help ease pressure on the country's health system during the coronavirus crisis. The trial program was accelerated due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which saw much travel and transportation effectively shut down around the world as authorities try to distance people to limit the spread. Authorities running the drone program say that aerial deliveries can reduce the cost and transportation time of vital medical supplies, particularly during a health crisis like the COVID-19 pandemic. They are expected to be used in only a select few cases where hospitals are particularly hard to reach. There's many areas in the UK that have very poor logistics connections um, and this aircraft is a solution to that. It, it carries a very significant load um, and we're actually an island nation. We have lots of small communities where something like this could connect people cheaply and efficiently. Some of those deliveries are urgent, some of the medicines are urgent, some of the test samples are urgent. They have 
um, finite shelf lives. So um, going by ferry is not an option for some of those um, deliverables. The project is about thinking more broadly about what is the best and most efficient transport network we can have in the Solent region. And of course in the future that will include drones. And the question is what role do they have to play? Uh, where do they best fit in to genuinely uh, lower our carbon footprint and to lower costs essentially.